Next, let's study about the dot product. So, what is a dot product? A dot product of vectors A and B can be defined by A dot B is equal to AB cos theta. So, this is, we have a two vector. We have vector A and vector B here. So, one vector A dot vector B, it can determine the angle in between two vector. So, its angle theta is the smallest angle between the two vectors and is always in the range of 0 degree to 100 degree. And then, the result of the dot product is a scalar. So, scalar means that it only gives us number. is either positive or negative. And then, the units of the dot product will be the product of the units of the vector A or vector B. So, how we can determine uh, this angle? Okay, this is because now we have that a dot B is equal to magnitude of A multiply magnitude of B cos theta, right? So, now we want to determine the theta. So, definitely theta is become shift cos A dot B divided by, here like this, divided by, Magnitude A multiply magnitude B. So, this is how we can determine the angle in between two vectors. So, how we want to apply this dot product. So, for this example, we have, here we have beam. So, we have beam here. So, this beam is a, let's say this beam is a, a vector B. And then this cable is a vector A. So, now we want to determine the angle in between these two vectors. So, we can apply the dot product. Alright. Now, look at here. Okay, this is how uh, it can simplify. Okay, when we have A dot B, when we have vector A dot B, it can be, it's equal to that. So, let's say this is the component for the vector A. So, we have AXI plus AYJ plus AZK. And then, we have a component for vector B. So, we have BXI plus BYJ and BZK here. So, now, uh, after we dot, after we multiply A dot B, so we can simplify like this. So, A dot B is only... This one. AX, BX plus AY, BY plus AZ, BZ. Means that uh, we just take off the number in this vector of the component X with the co component BX. No need the Cartesian anymore. It is because this one. When the vector I dot J is become zero, and then when the vector dot itself, let's say I dot I, J dot J, K dot J, uh, K dot K is become one. So that is why we can simplify like this. Let's take a look what is the applications of dot product. Okay, so we know that. The dot product can determine the angle in between two vectors. So, this is the angle. The angle theta. So, we can have, we can use this formula. So, if you have two vectors, you can have the A dot B. You, you get the magnitude A dot B and then you divide by the uh, A magnitude and B magnitude. Okay, and then uh, you must remember that the range of the angle is between 0 to one, 180 degree. Okay, so it means that, so let's see here. So here we have, so here we have uh, vector B and then here we have vector A. So now, this is theta 1. 
Okay, next we have vector C here. So this C we going going to have theta two. Okay, next. Next, we have vector D here. So, what is the theta D? So, theta D is 90 degree here. Okay, next. So, next we have vector E here. So, when we have vector E here, then we can have um, theta, we can have theta 3. Okay, so, look what happened. When we have theta is a 90 degree here, so it means that vector A is perpendicular to vector B. Ah, let's say here, this one. Okay, so let's say we can change the D to become A. Ah, so this one is A, this one is B. So, when the theta is 90 degree, it means that vector A is perpendicular to B or vector is perpendicular to each other. Then, that is why A dot B is equal to 0 because cos, zero, uh, cos 90 is 0. Right, cos 90 degree is 0. Okay, so look at this figure. Okay, this figure... The components of vector parallel and perpendicular to a line. So, let's say uh, this is the line AA. We just name it A, A line. And then this line, uh, this line is represented by the directions U. U means that unit vector. So, unit vector is represented direction. So, this is the component A, the vector A. So, this is a vector A. Next, component of A parallel or collinear with line AA is defined by the A parallel. So, uh, when this vector is resolved to this line, we call it as a A parallel. Okay, now, or we can, uh, we can also can, uh, okay, projections of A onto the line. Okay, so when, when we projection the vector A into this line, so we can have the A vector A parallel. So the vector A parallel is equal to A cos theta. So A cos theta because we resolve this one with this angle theta, right? So this one, this U is the direction. Okay, so we can have another property for the dot product. If we want to resolve vector A into A parallel, it's become A cos theta. And then, if direction of line is specified by unit vector U, which is U is equal to 1, then we can simplify that A parallel is equal to A cos theta also is equal to A dot U, like this. Okay? So, we can understood that when the theta is 90, the theta is 90 here, we have the A perpendicular. So, this is the symbol. So, A parallel and A perpendicular. Here, you may refer to this figure. So, now, if we have this uh, com vector A, so we can we can have okay when A when vector A is projection to this line A A, so it can be as a A parallel, and then when the theta is become ninety degrees, so the vector A is become A perpendicular. Okay, then here, if A parallel is positive, so the com the vector A parallel has directional signs same as U. Means that if uh, if A parallel is positive because it is the same direction. When it's opposite direction, so A parallel is become negative. Okay.
Okay, and then A parallel expressed as a vector. So, let's say here, A parallel is equal to A cos theta U. Or, you can have, you can determine the A parallel by A dot U. A dot U means that you have vector A and you have vector U. So, we can determine what is the value for the A parallel. Next application of the dot product is to determine the component of A perpendicular to the line AA. Right. So, now, what is the meaning of this? So, the vector A is equal to A parallel plus A perpendicular. So, now, you may refer to this figure. So, this is the line AA. Okay. So, this is the component. No, this is the vector A. So, this is the vector A. So, the vector A, if you sketch the parallel here, then the component is the A parallel and here is the A perpendicular. So, now, if we already establish the A parallel and we know the vector A, then we can have for the A perpendicular. How? Because A perpendicular can be determined by subtractions of vector A. So, A perpendicular is equal to vector A minus A parallel. Or, we can have that if we already establish, if we already define what is the theta, then we can use this theta to determine the value for the A perpendicular, which is magnitude of vector A sine theta. So, this is another application of the dot product. Here is the law of operations of dot product. Previous one, we already know the law for the uh, additional law for the subtraction, right? So, now what is the law for the dot product? So, number one, commutative law. So, here you can have A dot B is equal to B dot A. And number two, multiplication by scalar. So, if we have scalar, scalar if we have any numbers, 1, 2, 3, like that, right? So, the scalar, uh, let's say uh, scalar can multiply A dot B is equal to, you can have that scalar multiply with vector A dot B. Or also, it can have like the A dot scalar multiply B is equal to A dot B multiply by scalar. And then the last one, distribution law. Distribution law, uh, you can do that uh, A dot summation of B plus D is equal to A dot B plus A dot D. Okay, next, this is the how we can simplify uh, the dot product. Okay, so dot product of Cartesian unit vector. This is the example. If we dot uh, the dot product by itself, for example, I dot I. So, I dot I is equal to 1 multiply 1 cos 0. So, it's equal to 1. So, that is why we can simplify if we expand uh, the vector i dot i is become 1. And then here is i dot j. So, i dot j is equal to 1 multiply 1 cos 90. So, 1 cos 90 is 0. So, that is why it's become 0 here. And then similarly for others. So, here... That is how the dot product of two vectors A dot B is become like this. This is the N1. So, A dot B. Because we can simplify, this is become 1, this is become 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, and then 1. So, this is... The last answer. Now, let's solve example 2.15. The force are acting on the hook at point A. 
determine the angle between the force and the line EO and the magnitude of the projections of force along the line EO. Okay, so first, the question asks to determine the angle between the force and the line EO. So here, number one, you need to determine the angles and number two, the magnitude of the projection force along the line AO. So here let's say this is what we can say that this is the F parallel. Okay, you refer to this figure. So this figure, this is the point A and this is the force. Okay, now the force is given in the Cartesian already and with the unit kilonewton. So we need to get this angle. So now this is the line AO. So this line AO, you can represent the line AO as a RAO. Okay, so we need to substitute these uh, two vector inside this formula because this is this is angle, right? So you can write like this: theta is equal to shift cos. So now. You need to obtain what is the vector, what is the value of the F dot R A O, and then what is the value of the magnitude of F, and then you need to multiply with the magnitude of R A O. Then you can determine what is the angle for this question. Alright, next, so you can see here, so here is the F. So now the question is, what is the magnitude of F E O? So now that is why this is the F parallel. So here, so that F parallel or F E O can be determined by using two methods. Okay, number one, you can have F dot vector UAO because uh, UAO is the unit vector AO. You know how to establish the unit vector AO, right? Okay, next, the second method, you can have that second method because you already know what is the theta. Then, you can have that the magnitude of F cos theta. Alright? So, now, what is the first step? So, definitely, the first step is to establish the position vector. Now, we want to determine the position vector of RAO. So, here RAO. So, how to determine the position vector RAO? So, RAO, you need to define what is the point O here and what is the coordinate A here. So, O, you can see O is already at the origin. So, O here is 0, 0, 0, right? And then, what is A here? So, here, A can be, so now, A is what? In X. So, A in X is what? 1, right? 1 meter. So, A is uh, 1 and then here is a negative 2. 2 in Y and then 2 in Z. Positive. So, remember the right-handed. Okay. So, now after we have the coordinate A and O, so you can subtract that O minus A. Right. So, you have O minus A. So, you can have what? You have you have 0 minus 1, right? So, you have 0 minus 1 I plus 0 minus negative 2 J plus 0 minus 2 K. So, R E O is equal to negative 1 I plus 2 J Minus 2K. So, what is the unit? The unit is in meter. So, this is the RAO. Okay. So, now, 
we understood that the angle so one now we want to determine the angle between the force right so now we have a dot so we have we need to multiply the dot product here so what is the dot product here so we have f dot r e o so now this is the f so now we need to get what is the f dot r e o so still remember right so what is this value so you need to have let's say here you need to multiply the here you have negative 6 with the negative 1 plus 9 right you have 9 and 2 and then the other one is 3 multiply negative 2 so what is this value because we want to substitute in the formula angle here. Cos shift here. Uh, so, what is this value? Because it is scalar, right? And then, you need to determine what is this magnitude. What is the magnitude of REO here? And then, what is the magnitude for the F here? So, that magnitude, you can uh, multiply here. Okay, you divide and multiply here. So, this is the magnitude for the F. And this is the magnitude for the R, E, O. So, when you substitute everything here, then we can solve for the theta. Okay, next, we want to get what is the F parallel here, which is the F is projections to the line AO so F parallel here so you can uh, first method you can have that factor F dot with the unit vector so why why we need to use the unit vector because we need to get what is this direction so direction is represented by the unit vector A O so how to determine the unit vector U A O this is the unit vector the unit vector U A O is equal to the vector, the position vector R A O divided by its magnitude. Sorry. This one. Magnitude R A O. So here is the answer. So... Here you can substitute. So here is the answer. So after you substitute, okay. So this is um uh, this is our magnitude for the R E O, and this is the magnitude for the F. Okay, now this is the value of the F dot R E O, which is eighteen kilonewton dot meter, and then this is the answer for the angle. So, you substitute into the formula, then we can solve that angle is between 57.67. So, this is the angle. Okay, next, we want to solve what is the magnitude of the F parallel. Okay, so now, the first method, the first method here. So, this is, uh, we need to get the unit vector. So, this is the unit vector. So, you can have the unit vector. Then, you can have the multiplication which is f dot unit vector so f dot unit vector so you can get uh, f parallel or f projection to line ao is equal to 6 kilonewton or the second method you can have that f cos theta so the magnitude of s multiply cos theta so we already established what is the cos theta right so now we can have that 11.22 cos 57.67 also given 6 kilo newton next let's solve 2.16 so here the frame is subjected to a horizontal force f is given 300j at point b so point b is here Determine the components of this force parallel and perpendicular to the member AB. So now this is the member AB. So this is the member AB and this is the force. 
So now we need to get what is the F parallel and what is the F perpendicular. So now if we if if we sketch here uh, it become like this. So this is the parallel one. So this is the parallel F parallel and this is the F. This is the F perpendicular. Right. So how to solve that? Right. So now we understood that uh, based on the uh, based on the dot product so when we have the component so f so f parallel is equal to we have to make that right so first we can have the f chart cos theta right or you can have that f Short U A B right. Okay, here is not dot. Here is the here is multiply. Okay, so this is how we can determine the uh, F parallel. But for this case, can we find what is this theta or we can use, we can find what is the unit vector AB. So, because the force is already given 300J. Right. Okay. So, how to, so let's say we want to use this one, unit vector. So, what is the unit vector? So, unit vector is equal to position vector RAB divided by its magnitude. R A B. So you need to determine what is this, then you can have the dot product here. So to determine the F parallel. Okay. Next, how to determine the F perpendicular? This one. So F perpendicular. Okay, F perpendicular can be determined by the F minus with the f parallel right so you must remember this f parallel need to be in cartesian okay. because we understood that here f parallel here okay f okay f because here f parallel here you will get in scalar right in scalar so, okay, here you going to get in color. Okay, so here you will get the magnitude of the parallel in color. So that is why here, when we when we want to determine the uh, f perpendicular here, because our our F here is 300J, right? Uh, so, that is why you need to express the F parallel that you get here to be in Cartesian. So, how? So, how we express the magnitude force in Cartesian? As usual, you need to use the unit vector UAB. Okay. Can you got it? Can you solve this problem? Can, right? Here, we need to solve what is the position vector and unit vector. So, now we want to get what is the UAB here. UAB. So, we want to determine the unit vector UAB. We need to determine what is the RAB here. So, as usual, we need to determine what is the point A and what is the point B here. So, A is 0, 0, 0. And then B is what? 2, 6 and 3. And then how to determine the RAB? RAB is B minus A. 
then you can have that RAB is equal to 2I plus 6J plus 3K. And then to determine the unit vector, UAB is equal to position vector RAB divided by its magnitude. So this is the magnitude. So this is the answer for the UAB, the unit vector for the AB. So now we want to determine what is the F parallel. So F parallel here is equal F dot UAB here. So now you can have the dot here. So this is the 300 J is given and this is the unit vector. Then you can solve. So you can have the F parallel magnitude is 257.1 Newton. So that is the part 1. Okay, part 2, we need to solve what is the F perpendicular. Okay. So here, we need to change. Okay, now um, the F parallel. So the F parallel here is vector F minus F. No, this is the F perpendicular. So this is the F parallel. So, F perpendicular is equal to F minus F parallel. But, just now, we only have the scalar here. So, this is the F parallel. So, now, this scalar need to express in Cartesian. So, that is why we need to multiply with the unit vector A, B. So, you can have that F parallel in Cartesian is equal like this. So, now... Then we can uh, solve the mathematical, which is the F perpendicular is equal to 300J minus 733.5I plus 220J plus 110K. So we have the vector for the F perpendicular component is equal like this. Then you can check with the next. So you can check the magnitude. Uh, of the F perpendicular from the uh, theorem of Pythagoras. So here you can have that uh, the magnitude of the F parallel is equal to square root F exponential minus F parallel here. So this is the magnitude of F parallel and this is the uh, magnitude of F. So you can have that the magnitude for the F perpendicular is equal to 155 Newton. You got it? Next, let's solve the last example, 2.17. The pipe is subjected to force 800 Newton at point P. So, this is. Determine the angle. Determine the angle between F and pipe segment BA. Okay, and then magnitude of the component of force which are parallel and perpendicular to the member BA. So, this is the member BA. So, so, so this is the force. So, now we need to... So, let's say this is... So, this is the perpendicular to this member and... This is the parallel to the member BA. So now we need first. First we need to determine what is this theta. So based on the top product, theta is given. So the first one you can have that theta is given by shift cos. So you can have here. What is the dot product you can have here? So you can have this one, this line. So these two lines. So you need to determine um, what is the vector here. So let's say members, members BA. Okay, this members BA, you can have as a R BA. And then this line. So, this line, you can have the RBC. So, to determine the angle, you can have that. You can have that. Uh, 
R. Okay, you see there lah. Okay, you can have the R. Uh, position vector B, C dot position vector R, B, A. So, and 10 divided by its magnitude, right? So, R, B, C and R, B, A. So, you can solve it or not. So, in order to, in order to get what is the RBC, what is the RBA, the position vector BC and position vector BA, you need to determine what is the coordinate. Uh, so, what is the coordinate? So, what is the coordinate A, what is the coordinate B and what is the coordinate C? Because you want to determine what is the R, the position vector BC and position vector BA. What is this? Right. Hmm. So, as usual, what is A? So, A, the coordinate A is what? So, A is uh, X is 0, Y is 1, and Z is 0. And then B, what is the coordinate B? So, B, X is, uh, X is 2, Y, Y is 3, and then... Z is downward this negative one. And then how about C? What is the coordinate C? C X is two, Y is zero, and then Z is zero. So can you determine what is the position vector R B C and R B A? Can you do that? Okay, after you determine this one, uh, you determine the, the the vector. You determine the vector and this vector and then don't forget to determine its magnitude. And then you can set it into here. Then you can determine what is the angle. Right. Okay, next. How we determine the F. Okay, now we need to determine what is the F parallel and F perpendicular. Yeah. Hmm. How to determine? F parallel, F, F perpendicular. Can you do that? Alright. So next, so here is the answer for the theta. So you may refer to this figure as what we have discussed before. So this is the RBA and this is the RBC. Then you substitute into uh, this equation. Then you can determine that theta is equal to 42.5 degree. You can check with your answer. And then uh, the second part is to determine what is the F parallel. So now, so you can have that. Um, F parallel is equal to F B A dot K okay, F B A is equal to uh, F dot U B A. Okay. Here. Okay, here. F parallel uh, because F is given. So, now we need to have that F dot U B A. So, now you already have the RBA, right? So, now you can have that what is the unit vector UB, uh, UBA. <coughs> so, now you can have this one. This is the unit vector. And then that unit vector, you can uh, get what is the F parallel here. So, this F parallel, you need to, because this is... Um, magnitude only. So, that is why we need to express in Cartesian. So, when we express in Cartesian, we need to have like this. So, now you can have uh, this is the answer for the F parallel uh, and then this is um, what we call here, uh, when we dot the F dot you and be here, okay. You be a here, so this is you be a here, and this is the 800 dot you be see here. This is okay. This is dot uh, okay. 
this is the UBA and this is the UBC because we need to express this in Cartesian I J K so that is why we need to express the force given here in the UBC here so UBC is getting from this position vector so now uh, we solve the mathematical then we can obtain that the magnitude for the F parallel is 490 okay you got it okay next okay next we want to determine the <coughs> magnitude of the F perpendicular okay so okay here sorry so here you can check uh, with the trigonometric uh, with the answer here because uh, we already define what is the theta right so from this theta because we have the magnitude so also we can get what is the magnitude for the f parallel here so 800 cos 42.5 is a similar answer uh, for the f parallel as what we have done before okay so now what is the magnitude of the f perpendicular so f perpendicular is equal to f sine theta so this is the f and this is the theta so you can solve you can get that f the magnitude of the f, per, f perpendicular is 540 newton and also this one you can check with the theorem pythagoras which is that um, square root 800 uh, in exponential minus 590 same you have the f magnitude for the f perpendicular is 540 newton so uh, that is how we can apply the dot product okay that's all for the chapter 2 part 3 which we have uh, already implemented that um what is the position vector, what is the force vector directed along a line, and then the last part 3 is the dot product. So now everyone can solve the tutorial part 2. Tutorial 2 part 2. Okay. See you for the next lecture. Bye.